What's going on, man? It's your big brother, K Reno. Y'all are tuned in to another um, version of K Reno Radio right here, man. And, and as y'all can see, we have a very esteemed, special, special guest with us tonight, man. This brother is an award winning rapper, producer, activist, accomplished actor. He's done it all, man. He's, he, he's, his work in the community is, is, is known all around the world and he's done so much for the music scene and he's done so much for the black community and the community on the whole, man. So I'm just honored to have you with you have you have with us tonight, my brother. The one and only David Banner is in the building. How you feeling, family? Thank you very much, man. Uh, before I start, bro, I, I want you to know, man, how much I appreciate you, bro. I, I know I ain't told you this story all the time, a bunch <laughs> of times, but um, I need to say it in front of the people who adore and love you, man. Um, it's it's sort of sad to a certain degree what we have to go through as enlightened Southerners. Mm -hmm. Bro, I, I, I heard about you a long time ago. And I, I remember the context context in which um, we were speaking because I was I was telling somebody how deep vice versa from Pastor Troy actually is. And people missed how deep, especially Pastor Troy's verse was. And I was talking about that verse, talking about that verse, and somebody was like, yo, you need to hear this cat, K. Reno. <laughs> it's like, yo, he got a record. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not like that, but it's similar. You know, talking about evil and good, the devil and God, and it went on and went on, bro. And I I went and ordered the album, bro. And um, you know, your lyrical dexterity, bro. Um, what you talk about, what you have been talking about. Um, because one of the things that I told people, I said it's funny how um those demons work, like people for the most part, seem or are trying to be a lot more conscious, right? Just a general everyday person. But instead of getting the people who have always been warning them, instead of going to get the people who have historically been trying to say it and risking their lives, they will get the same group of people who are just regurgitating the same things that you've been telling us for years, bro. And so I just want to applaud you. I, I want to thank you, bro. I, uh, you know, although I know that your faith is connect heavily connected to the reason why you rap like that, you and I both know it's people who have the same faith and uh, don't necessarily uh, walk their walk that they talking, you know? And um, I just wanted to tell you how much I appreciate you, man. And, um, you know, in our own personal walk of life, you know how I feel, but I, I think, man, that um, just positivity and great thinkers and even the ability to say that you're smart. Somebody told me recently, man, that I was one of the few people who was smart and proud of it and always have been proud of it. Yeah, I'm from the streets. Yeah, I've done a lot. But, you know, I'm also a semester and a thesis away from my master's degree. I had 3.9987, an accelerated master's program. You know what I'm saying? And proud of that. I, I've never been ashamed of it. I actually didn't know it was a thing, you know, to make a, you know, to, to not be smart, you know? But I just want to let you know that I appreciate you, man. And, and uh, I'm grateful to say that I was intelligent enough to, to, to connect and um, be a servant when I could, you know, as it pertains to the things that you've done to our people, man. And I'm just grateful to you. Uh, brother, the, the feeling is is beyond mutual, brother, because you have always been somebody that I look at as being so intelligent, so smart that you are able to be in those what they call those mainstream circles. But it yeah. has not compromised who you are as a person because you still get out there and stand strongly and stand mm -hmm. unashamed to be in the black community and getting down for the crown. So mm -hmm. I applaud you because a lot of artists, they really don't, once they get to that point, man, they, they start getting a little nervous about still standing up with their chest out. And, mm -hmm. and I've never seen that from you. So um, 
one of the first questions I want to ask you, you know, being from Mississippi, what was um what was your origins in music? How did you get started and, and what lit the fire for you? Oh man, um the story that a lot of people don't know, man, is when I was in high school, um, Jackson, Mississippi was the murder capital of the United States. You know, um, you know, we we are heavily connected to the black exodus and Mississippi is one of those places that we swap in and out uh, lineage with Chicago and with Illinois and with, you know, St. Louis and anything that, you know, the Mississippi River carried, you know, both as it pertains to water and and that train, that, uh, that you know, that railroad, you know, we went back and forth. So what was happening was if somebody would, you know, get into a scuffle or, you know, you know, ask somebody out in Chicago, first place their parents would send them in most cases was to their grandmother in Mississippi. You know, um, some of the origins of our, um, our, our alternative groups, um, some of the origins is from Mississippi, you know, and uh, so the violence in Jackson was unbelievable when I was growing up and Believe it or not, my skate was hip hop. You know, um, I had an uncle that brought, he, for some reason he decided he, he wanted to be a, a blues DJ and he brought, I'm talking about crates and crates of records to Mississippi. Um, one of the things that people don't know, I was rapping in Mississippi, well, specifically in Jackson um, before they were playing rap on the radio during the week. When I started rapping, they was only playing rap on the weekend on WNPR from like two to six or like one to four or something like that. But um, because I, I, I think about that a lot of times, a lot of people who, you know, rap now or wanted to rap, they they, they teased me, you know, and um, I uh, uh, ended up. You know, you know, freestyle battles, talent shows, you name it, we did it. And um, I just couldn't afford to buy beats. We, we were so broke, I, I couldn't find beats. And it was funny when, um, when I did scrap up the money to try to get a beat from somebody, you know, that's something I try not to do as a producer now is throw people secondhand beats. They would throw me secondhand beats, and I was like, bro, I listen to your music. I'm a fan of you. I don't want that. I want what was on the album. Right, right. You know, and I started producing at 16. As I started rapping in the sixth grade. You know, uh, I started uh, producing at 16 and ended up finding out my biological father, who I don't know, played 11 instruments. Wow. So, like, I always wondered, like, why? I hear it. I hear music, bro. Um. You know, I, I I never dreamed of being a producer. I just did it because I ain't had no choice. Well, I couldn't afford nobody else. Yeah. And I, I happened to be good at it. And, um, you know, production honestly ended up being every time that I get in trouble and money get low, beats and production has always been with, people don't know this to this day, I own a very, 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 very successful um, um production company uh, called a banner vision we score movies and video games i did some of the biggest gatorade commercials in history you know and i, I kept quiet about that because one of the things in our community you know people can't stop you if they don't know what to do come on you know man. so i so i usually don't talk about my business ventures until i'm about six years ahead of people so like at this point, people couldn't stop me if they wanted to. I, I could only mess that up, but yeah, that's a, that's, that's about how it happened. And and you said something that made me think about another question. So when I think about the state of Mississippi, your name always comes to mind as being that pioneer, being that person. Is this somebody that was that had came before you that we don't know about that? help set the thing on, on fire in Mississippi or get the ball rolling, or are you well, the one that really just busted it open? Well, well, there was several people, bro, just to be honest with you. I think I was the first one to have that, that main, mainstream success. I mean, because the truth is, not just with music, what people don't know, it's a lot of people from Mississippi that just don't say nothing about it. 
Oprah from Mississippi, Jerry Rice from Mississippi. I mean, it go on and on. There's a book, man, that's um that it's called Mississippi. It's three volumes of it. And they talk about all the people who from Mississippi and I'm from Mississippi and I didn't know. Kermit the Frog <laughs> is Kermit the Frog is from Mississippi because Jim Henson is from Mississippi. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? The dog Benji is from Mississippi. Man, there's so many people from Mississippi, bro. I didn't know James Earl Jones was from Mississippi. Yeah. Like it goes on and on, but um, while even from my city, there was a group called Wildlife Society. Um, they was on the same label as Mike Geronimo. If 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 if, if you remember Mike Geronimo, mm-hmm. um, the the group uh, slips my um my memory, but it was a group that Hammer had signed. I remember the girl rapper was her name was Treasure, but I forgot the name of uh the group. The Hammer had signed. They actually had a hit single, and they were from Mississippi. There's so many groups that were before me. I just, I just think that I, I, I represented. Um, it was funny, man, that you say that, man, and, and I appreciate you guys. KLC from Beast by the Pound was applauding me today about just the way that I unapologetically represent the South, and he was like, "Bro, like, there's a lot of people who rep it when it comes to them, but it's like just." not giving a damn and putting it in folks face. He's like, bro, I really appreciate you. Um, so I, I just think, you know, and, and I have to give credit to two people. Um, Pimp C, when Pimp C said that, you know, he don't do hip hop music, you know, he do country rap tunes and the way that Pimp, just his aura just drips off to me. Mm-hmm. You know, what, what, a pe- what a lot of people don't know that Pimp C was a a close personal friend of mine, yeah. you know, um, I, I, I want to tell you that story if, if it was something that you're interested in, but I want to finish answering whatever. your question. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Sure. But let me finish answering your question. And I never forget when I heard No Play in GA by Pastor Troy on Atlanta radio, that was, that was so not mainstream radio. That was just so unapologetically Georgia. And we were driving through, I was driving through going to do something. I don't remember through Atlanta. And I heard that. And I said, I'm gonna go home and represent Mississippi like that. Cause Pastor Troy says, as long as I got GA, I'm cool. All the rest of the stuff is just gravy on top. If you know, and if you think about our community as a whole, as much money as our people spend, I have a saying, K Reno, that oh, uh uh three, what you say it was three, five, seven. Um, Oak Town, Oak Town. Yeah, yeah, Oak, Oak Town, Town 357. 357. Um, no, it wasn't Oak Town 357. No, that that's not I, maybe one of they one of that group it was it was another group. Now Oak Town 357 was definitely from from Oakland. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh what I was going to say was um what I was saying was is that you know, with the amount of money that our community spends, I have the saying that if I had us, I wouldn't need them. I wouldn't need no other race of people. I wouldn't need nothing from nobody. I wouldn't need to audition for no movie. Um, Derek Gray said that. He was like, man, if, you know, as smart as David Banner is, imagine if our community made him a billionaire, the things that he would come up with, if if all he had to worry about is just thinking in general. But um, I like, like, those were some of the things that, you know, then, of course, you know, Outcast, Goody Mob, and Face, and, you know, all, all of our pioneers, you know, ghetto boys, it goes on and on, but yeah. You know, and, and when you was talking about Pimp C and when I thought about the person that made me really look at like being from the South, like just unapologetic, for me, it was Willie D. And mm-hmm. when Willie D came out, it was just like raw, uncut Southern slang. Willie D said, well, if he said, I'll slap your lips off. Exactly. <laughs> he said, I'll slap your lips off. Off, not off. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. but see, but Pimp, Pimp came along later and followed that up with the same unapologetic, like you said, the country rap tunes and all that. But I always appreciated it about you because somebody has to be the person that puts their area on. It got to be somebody. And if we spend so much time trying to emulate other regions, we love the other regions, but we got to be proud of where we come from or where we um, mm-hmm. established our roots at. 
And um, mm-hmm. you've done that. And even for people like, um, have did you have any type of um, influence or mentorship to uh, crit at all? Or Cause I know he came later behind you. Um, what, this is what I say about crit. Me and crit were friends a long time before people knew that we were friends. I, I would never take credit uh, for anything that Crit did, but we were friends a long uh, for a long time, time longer than people knew we were. And I told him, I was like, Crit, there's a lot of people that hate me. You know, um, I said, you you go ahead and do what you do. Stand on your own. Don't don't. You know, I told him because that was when Crit came out is when co-signing was real popular. I never forget this man. Um, Crit was on. Crit had had a hard time in New York, and he was about to go up on stage again. He was like, "Banner, could you just come out and then bring me out on stage?" And I was like, "Bro, you don't want that." I think it initially hurt his feelings, but then he came back and told me I was right. I was like, "Bro, you don't want you don't want people to like you because of me. You go stand up on that stage alone by yourself." And, and slay that crowd and get them to love you based on your accolades and what you do. You know, I'm here, but you need to walk that, you need to walk in that light on your own. So you would never have to worry about being in the shadows of Dave family. You know, um, he's his own man. And uh, I'm very proud. I told Crit that if I could have created in a test lab or something, someone that could come after me, I couldn't have created Crit. Wow. You know, I, I I couldn't have I, I couldn't have made a better person even if it, it if it was me who created. But um, I'm very 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 proud of him. Wow, that's beautiful, man. The great David Bounty is with us right here on K Reno Radio. I remember the first time I saw you. It was on the old school. You remember the old school Murder Dog magazines back in the yeah. day? That's the yeah. first time I saw you because I was thinking like. David Bound, like that's an incredible hope, man. I mean, it's like, yeah. but when I started reading up and then just kind of getting familiar with your story, man, and, and all mm-hmm. and Murder Dog always supported those independent artists. Mm-hmm. As they artist, always supported me, yeah. My, myself as well. As a mm-hmm. as an artist, that independent role, the starting off doing it on your own, especially from a region that didn't even have a scene established, like we just said. How mm-hmm. tough was it for you? to just establish the business part of your Ooh. career? Uh, I won't limit it to just business, bro. I just say, man, uh, I had an assistant, man. and This is very powerful what he said. He said, if, if I could know that I would make it for sure, like 100% know that I, I would make it, and I had to go through what you went through to make it, he said, I wouldn't do it. Wow. You know, I, but if you think about it, Kay, the stuff that we go through in the South in general, we don't we don't think about it as hard. It just is the way that it is. You know, what people don't understand musically, they didn't really start playing our music that we listen to. Um, it, it, it's been about 12, between 12 to 15 years. They just really recently started playing the music that we were actually playing in our car. Come on. You know, of course, the Ghetto Boys was an exception to the rule, but like, you know, A-Ball, MJG, 3-6 Mafia, the early 3-6 Mafia. Yeah. Later on, they were able to break through themselves, but what we were playing on the radio, it didn't, It that wasn't a translation of what people were listening to in their cars, right? That's why I say these kids got something that they, they don't even know how, you know, how good they actually got it, man. But what I'll say, bro, is just, um, it's funny because all the stuff, and this, this is sort of, this was the most high speaking to me. It's crazy. All of the stuff that I was doing, bro, I end up having to come back to and do anyway. I think one of the biggest mistakes that we made as Southerners is that they gave us all this money and we stopped doing what we were doing in the first place. We should have took that money from them labels and kept the same exact grind, the same exact push, you know, 
concentrated in the same. The guy that I know that did that really well uh, was Yo Gotti. Yo Gotti kept working the same regions that he was working before he got his deal. And that was one of the reasons why he was so successful. But but like with me, man, it, it, it was so hard, man. But it was hard for us in the first place. I was just speaking about that with, with Katrina. What a lot of people don't know is a lot of the regions that they talk about as it pertains to Katrina actually were not hit by Katrina. Katrina went over a lot of those regions and the residual effects of Katrina, but like south, the south parts, the, the most south parts of those states were the ones that were actually hit by Katrina and people never talk about those places. But what I was saying, like in Mississippi, we so used to being looked over that we don't even expect or demand help. We don't expect and demand the, 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 the if, if you think about black people as a whole, what we fight for most of the time, we fight for civil rights. Right. I forgot who, I forgot who said that because I would, I always like to give credit to people. That's something that we don't like to do. But uh, I, I heard somebody say, we are fighting for, for civil rights, just for people to treat us civilly. Right. Think about that, bro. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like we are asking somebody to just treat us as if we are human beings. Mm. Not, not treatment equal, not because I think we better personally, if you ask me. I think Come we on. better. Come on. But if you if if think about think about most of the things we do in life. If 10 is your goal, there's not too many people in history that's ever hit 10 if 10 is the goal. So if you hit 10 at the most, most people ever hit is eight, right? So if you beg to be treated civilly and that's the 10, imagine where you're gonna land, even if you get the best out of people. Come on, man. Well, you know, you know? We, we are we uh we under a constitution that labeled us as three-fifths. So yep. we definitely were not considered to be a full and complete human in the first place. So when mm -hmm. you start when you start the race off a hundred yards from the start line, mm -hmm. then quite and as intentionally there, quite naturally then. That's the struggle that we're gonna go through. The, the, the only, only thing I try to get our people to understand is that the difference between our, our people and that scenario is that we created the race. Come on. So and 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 we're also in a race that we don't we don't have to compete in. If if we supported our own, if if we policed our own, if we loved ourselves and start running after white people, um. One of the reasons why white people do us the way that they do is because they know we want to be them. That's right, bro. You know, um, so like if if it only would have to happen one good time, you know, if we loved our children like we say that we love our children, let a teacher let a teacher uh, reprimand your child nowadays. Think about what somebody going to go up to that school and do if that teacher black. Right. Right. But if and and I said this I said this uh this morning on Instagram I was like. All you got to do is protect your child. I'm not even telling you to be black power or be a militia. I'm not telling you to, you're not hunting their kids like they're hunting our kids. All I'm telling you to do is protect your child mm -hmm. or protect your husband or your wife or whoever it may end up being. I, I, I don't believe, you know, that we love, I don't even think, and this is going to sound strange, but just hear me out, bro. I don't think we love ourselves like they love us. And, and what I say by what I say by that, what I mean by that is they actually know who we are. That's why they hate us the way that we are. We are God spoke who are spoiled children. We are the physical manifestation. We are the closest thing to the most high. And we don't, we don't know it. You know, they slip every now and then and say tall, dark, and handsome. You know, um, they, you know, they praise the black Madonna. Come and on. if the Madonna and if the Madonna is black, that mean that if Jesus existed, he is a he is a, at least half. Come on, man. He de he hey, definitely, he definitely not that picture that we see. Absolutely. You know, everything that we touch and we do, although we we, you know, just seven, eight, nine, ten, a, a hundred, a thousand steps behind anything that if we have the peace. One of my Muslim friends said something so powerful. He said, David Banner. He said, you see them buildings over there? He said, what would happen to them buildings or that plot of land over there if nobody went over there, if nobody stepped over there, nobody walked over there? I said, I don't know. 
He said it would grow back into the uh, woods again. He said anything that you leave alone, it returns back to God. Them folks just left us alone. We would be God again, yeah, no my correct. opinion. I know that wasn't the question that you asked. No, but. no, bro. That was a perfect, and it was a perfect segue to what I was talking, what I wanted to go into next, because, you know, I can't talk to you without going into what's going on in this current environment right now. And we just yeah. saw what happened to Dante Wright out in Minnesota, right in the middle of the trial for Derek Chauvin, who murdered George Floyd. So yeah. when these types of things happen, I got to get your take on this. We tend to kind of go in this same little cycle. We're going to get out there and we're going to protest and we're going to march and rally and all that yeah. only to see it happen to some young. It's unfortunate to say it's some young person, some black person that's walking around right now that's going to be the next victim of that. How do, how do you view that? I want to know what David Banner thinks about all the way from, oh. from Trayvon Martin to now. And what should our response be in your I don't, I don't I don't know if you've been noticing, man, but I I've I've sort of stepped away mm. from giving my opinion about stuff like that because I our our people as a whole don't really listen. You know, um I always tell people all the time, like, you know, I'm not saying who we should have chosen or who was better, but I always say, you know. Uh, you know, most people would say Martin Luther King and Malcolm um, were the two people who, you know, as a whole, people recognized as the front runners, and, you know, in the last, you know, in recent times for mm -hmm. our people. And then I'll turn around and say, well, who did black people pick as a whole? And most people say Martin Luther King. And I'll then turn around and say, well, since you agree that we chose, all right, well, look at where we are by cho choosing that path. That path has not gotten us anywhere. So why do we continue to use those same methods? I don't think Martin Luther King at his death actually agreed with the Martin Luther King that they push in our no, face. He didn't, he didn't. You know, so what, what I'll say is I don't understand why the victim is always the one yelling peace. I don't understand why the victim is always the one that's yelling about gun rights when the truth is, even if they got the most stringent gun laws, period. The two people who don't care nothing about gun laws are who? Policemen and, and thieves and robbers. Them are the two people that's gonna have a gun regardless. So on. the only person that we truly are hurting by stringent gun laws are people who actually need them the most. Because as long as the government you know, has a gun, I'm gonna have one. I'm not restricted by my police <laughs> as it pertains. <laughs> so, you know, I got the thing. But what, what, what I'll say, man, is that we can, you know, we continuously, I think God through pain shows us the way that we are supposed to go. And if you continue bumping your head, that's the most high telling you that that's not the way. Come on. So we continue waiting on these people to act right. Well, historically, I'm not, I, I study, I study those people um, the same way we study math and science. The thing that people don't understand about white people is most of them come from very cold climates. Come they come from places where they have to import 70% of their resources. So they have to go outside the places that they're from to survive. Right. What people don't understand about white folks is they are in a genetic war. See, mm -hmm. most of our people don't even know that they're at war, but this ain't about racism for, 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 for most intelligent white people. It's about the survival of their race. Come on. If, if black and brown people just continue to have sex, we gonna win. Right. That's the reason why, you know, they cloning and, 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 and trying to play the most high is because they can't keep up naturally. So their hatred and their aggression uh, towards us is bigger than race. Just, they look at us the same way that we look at each other with the, uh, with, the uh, uh, with COVID. When they look at a black person, even, at, even in their most natural way, if they are man, they see, a dominant threat. We are dominant in every way, right. you know? So for us to believe that those people will ever do right, we are the fool. I tell people all the time, I, I actually look at those people different now. I look at them no different than I would look at a snake. In a lot of cases, they can't even help themselves. If I walk over there by a snake and know where and see the snake, the snake is in, 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 in clear view of my path and I walk over there by that snake, would I be surprised if that snake bites me? No. You shouldn't be. His, 
historically they have been this way. So for us to act like we surprised and they show us over and over again that they are going to do what we supposed to do. They're going to protect their children even when their children are wrong. Mm -hmm. And then we sit back and hold our breath as if somebody's going to bring us justice beside ourselves. You know, one of the one of the motivations that I get from those people, those people came from caves and now they basically run this earth. So we are waiting for somebody to come and save us when they are a perfect example that if if you put if you put your mind and your spirit to it, then you can run this earth too. As a matter of fact, I believe spiritually, you know, people always talk about God coming back. If I'm just saying I have no understanding of what the most high feels or thinks, but I would be pissed off. Okay, Reno, if I gave you the keys to my car, I said, hey, bro, here you go. And I put them in your hand. When I came back, whenever I came back, the only thing that I would expect from my car is the, the wear and tear that it would, would, it, it, it would, that would occur just by existing, you know? Um, but I want my truck in great shape based on the years that I gave it to you. I believe that God going to look at us, the black man, the same way. I gave you the keys to this earth and look at where it is right now. And I'm not even talking about racism right now. I'm talking about polar ice caps. I'm talking about the air, the fish, the water, the food. We have sit back and let the baby of this planet, literally the baby of this planet, teach us about religion. When we were ancient, before they even popped up on this earth, we were ancient. Right, so, so, so to answer your question more directly, man, um, I tell people this and it hurt people's feelings. If you're going to post about something and not do anything about it, you then turn into the poster child. And I call it white insecurity. I don't call it white supremacy, white supremacy, because they're not supreme. But then you become a poster child for white insecurity. And you're showing the whole entire world what you won't stand up and fight for. Come on. So if you, if you keep posting a picture every day about somebody killing a black person and you don't do anything about mm -hmm. it, you might as well put a hood on your head. It's funny because the whole time you're talking, I'm thinking because you're hitting on so many things that are reflective of the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. <laughs> and it made me think about a scripture because we are the way we are as black people in terms of dealing with these situations with police and all that, because we've been conditioned to be that way. We've been, they put fear in us when we was babies mm -hmm. and the epigenetics with mm -hmm. those cells of, of fear have passed through generations that right. exists. That's a real thing. And there's a scripture that talks about the dry bones in the valley. Mm -hmm. There were some dry bones in the valley and the, the prophet was prophesying to the bones, trying to make the bones get up and do something and the bones wouldn't move. So the prophet went back to God and God said, well, don't prophesy to the bones no more, prophesy to the wind. And when he Ugh. prophesied to the wind, the wind started moving the bone, the bone started to shake. See, the winds yeah. represent the, dev the devils of this world. That if we're mm -hmm. not going to do it on the word of what the man of God is telling us to do, okay, mm -hmm. then he's going to send them demons down to whoop us, you know, mm -hmm. and get us to move. But we're going to move, mm -hmm. but we're so slow to move, bro. And um, mm -hmm. that's why I applaud you because, again, you being the brother that you are, and to say the things that you're saying without fear like that, bro, mm -hmm. you know. That's but, let, me, right. let me be, excuse me for interrupting, okay. let me be clear about something, though. And I, and I want to do this for, the kids that are watching. Hmm. Uh, I want to be clear. I'm, I'm, um, I, I, I wouldn't say that I'm not afraid. Um, we've seen the trauma. I mean, we see trauma. We know what happens. Uh, when I go to elementary schools and I ask kids, what happens to, to Black people that stand up? You can ask a seven-year-old child that they'll tell you, die. Dead. That's the one thing that white history will show you is stand your Black ass up if you want to and you die. It's not that I'm not afraid, but my love for my people and for myself and for myself is more than my fear. Perfect love cast out all fear. That's another scripture. You know, <laughs> you, you, think, you think about 
the the mother that ran into the mm -hmm. water to, to save her child from the alligator. Mm -hmm. It's like perfect love cast out fear. So yeah, you're right, brother. Mm -hmm. It's not about us not having fear. It's about, yeah. as Mr. Farrakhan said, facing the fear and challenging mm -hmm. the fear and then turning the tables on it. Because I don't want these, I, I don't want these, I don't want these kids to think that I'm fearless because I to to to, to be without fear is a fool. Mm -hmm. They 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 the, 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 I think what they don't understand about you know what the Christians say is that it, it got it, they say in, in in their walk of life that you're not to have a spirit of fear. Like that, we, 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 the fear is there for a reason because those those demons are dangerous. Right. They will kill you. So if you you not afraid, then you fool. Yeah. It's it's it, well not afraid. If 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 fear isn't present, um, and I, and I don't want them to think that. I want them to know that I continue to move, uh, uh regardless of the fear. Right. You know because I I know what it is, bro. To, 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 to just tell you something, man, you know, because of the type of man you are, man, like a lot of times when I'm walking through the airport and, and I can honestly say, you know, I, I don't think that I get, I don't think that I get what, what we should give people that stand for us, but I get more than my peers who do the things that I do. I, I can honestly say that I, I have a trust with our people, especially the youth. Um, that I, I even marvel at sometimes and I don't, I take it very seriously. There's not too many artists on this planet that black people allow to grow up. Right. It's not too many of them. They let me grow up dog, right. and still make a way for my family. And I'm grateful for that. But what I was going to say was, man, is that um, I walk through the airport and I, and I watch people and sometimes I be feeling like, they like, man, we love David Banner, but them crackers gonna kill that nigga. Mm -hmm. Like, I really be feeling like that, man, because they be trying to give me out. Like, here, man, take it, just, just take it, here, man, just stick it to the man. But I, I, and I noticed that with most of our leaders, man, we'll sit back and there's something that's happening to a real good friend of mine right now, man, and he's being ostracized in the media, bro. And without any tr truth or any facts or anything man it's like we we sit back and look at the the fall of our people like it's television right. so like we almost like it the same way you know that that, that them crackers used to have picnics and, and watch black folks get hung on the oh, trees hanging, bro yeah, yeah we, we sit back and watch the same thing and people who have historically always been there for us man you know i i thought about this today the way that black people in general did ice cube bro yeah. I, 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 I wouldn't blame Ice Cube if he didn't ever come back and try to do nothing for black people ever again. I, I personally wouldn't trip because the thing was, he was telling the truth. Right. There was nothing that he said that wasn't right and exact. Right. It didn't feel good. It wasn't the same old way. And that's what I'd be trying to get people to understand. The things that work for us are going to be things you've never seen before because what you're doing is not working. I tell my Christian friends that all the time. Now tell me how that worked for you. I'm not going to argue with you. I just want you to tell me how that's working for you. You've been doing that for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years. I'm not saying if you write or wrong, but I'm just asking you how that worked for you. Write it on a sheet of paper. Get the emotions out of it. How has that worked? And, 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 and bro, I just... K. Reno, I, I'll tell you something, man, that, that, you know, and I know I don't want to go down this road too much, but I just want to be honest with you. Bro, I'm tired, bro. Like, bro, I'm 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 real life tired, man. Like, I, I'm so tired, bro. Like, people don't know, you know, the sacrifices. You know, I look good. I know I look good. I, I know how to put the face on, you know. One of my homegirls, man, I, I was actually going to talk about this on Instagram, but I'll give it to you first, man. I, I had one, one of my homegirls, I, I bought this machine, the same ones that my chiropractor uses. And uh, uh, she was working on my back with the machine. And I was like, yo, that hurt. And she kept going, kept going. I was like, yo, that hurt. She kept going, kept going. I grabbed the machine. I put it on her. 
And she was like, man, that hurt worse than anything. And she, she was like, how do you put up with it? She said, I, you, I thought you was Wolverine. I didn't think you ever get hurt. I said, baby, my feelings be hurt all the time. I said, I hurt all physically. K Reno, I work out, bro, like, like a football player, bro. Uh, I got, because I understand more, I take shit from my people. It's a couple people, man, just recently, I should have beat their ass. I should have just straight up. But I was telling people on Instagram this morning, I prayed to God, man, that I would never, if I, if I, if only if I had to, that I don't want to get into a conflict with a black person on TV or on the radio or just outright. Like if, if we got as men go see each other like the way that we see them, I don't care what, what we talking about, whether we talking about pistols or hands, we ain't got to do that in front of people. Right. You know, I think we're at a point that we have to show solidarity. Even if we disagree with each other, we don't have to do it in public. Right. You know, and um, bro, I give, bro. I, I, give, I give in ways that some people think I'm stupid, bro, but I love our people, man. But I, I can't lie to you, you know. I'm 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 fucking tired, bro. And that, I'm, you know, I'm tired. And that and that that's understandable. But on the same token, we we go back mm-hmm. to the same old school who say, well, God ain't gonna put nothing on an individual that they can't bear. Some people mm-hmm. are built for it. I just mm-hmm. feel like you one of the individuals who are built for it because even man, look, if you if you go back to the prophets. They mm-hmm. was like, man, I don't want to do this. You know, why, <laughs> why me? God, why'd you choose me? You know, mm-hmm. they 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 question that that situation, but the most high knows us better than we know ourselves because he mm-hmm. created us. So he knows who best to put that message in and to get that mission to. And yeah. you're gonna get tired sometimes. You're gonna you just gotta yeah. find ways to recharge, step away, and jump. I just think, I just think, I mean, I agree with what you're saying a hundred percent. But the pressures that I'm talking about come from our folk. Yeah. And, it, and, it, and, it's, by, and it's by choice. Mm-hmm. You know, we, 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 I expect that from the mother folk. I, I, I understand that. But the things that we do to ourselves, bro, that, and, and let me tell you, I, I'll give you proof that we know better. A lot of my homeboys would be like, man, Negroes don't know better, man. They just don't know better. But then I tell them, but as soon as the white cops come around that corner, they straighten up. They learn how to talk. They learn how to be respectable. I believe people do to who they know care. You know, I, I um, you know, just recently, man, I, I, I had to put my hands on somebody. And uh, I hadn't put my hands on nobody in that way in a long time. And my mom was actually there crazy that was why I put my hands on him because my mom was there and um my mom was like man you know they they were a little bit they're a little bit off you know they don't they didn't understand and I asked her this question and to this day she said you know I, I think I shocked her soul I said mama would he would he have slapped the cobra and my mom was like no nah, because he know who to disrespect right and I bet you he won't do that ever again in my presence. Right. I don't care how crazy that they say he is. Right. People are crazy to the extent that we allow them to be. So me being tired comes from, you know, I, I watch, you know, one of the things I told one of my friends are like, imagine, imagine that, that second generation of people who are held captive by them folk who don't have the, didn't have the memory of the generation before, because the generation before knew who they were, and then they were too far away to hear the whispers of freedom. Imagine those people who were fighting. That's real tired. Like we, 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 we got an easier type of tired. But with mine, with, with my thing is, I believe that we fight a fight that just about no other race has to fight because they they know who their clear and present enemy is, whether they tolerate it or not. There's so many of our people who really don't know that they're at war. Right. There's so many of our people who don't really see a problem with the way that life is. And that is my problem. I told my friend, man, I was like, man, my grandmother died thinking she was blessed. And that's how the enemy truly wins for the oppression that my grandmother saw. And, 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 and until, you know, the latter part of her life having to scrape and, 
you know, just to get the basic essential, you know, things that a human is supposed to have. And for you to leave this earth with a smile on your face, like that's what they, that's what our enemy hopes to do is for them to be able to cast evil all over this world. And, and we call it a blessing. You know, I, I think it's also, you know, being blessed with the vision to be able to see certain things. I'm not the smartest guy in the world. I don't, you know, I, people call me certain things, but I don't, I think the things that I do are things that you're supposed to do. And we, we are truly alpha males who have been enlightened and who understand, um, cause that's half of the battle is just knowing, you know, um, we are supposed to things that I do are pale in comparison to the people that came before. It's just that nobody else for the most part, you know, it's, it's exceptions to the rule as yourself and, and, and a few of our comrades, but it makes us seem like we're a lot more than we actually are, you know, because most people won't even, you know, try you know, to, to, to fight or stand up or be a gentleman or, or, or be things that, you know, you couldn't survive in our neighborhoods a few generations ago without being those things, right. bro. Right. You know, so that, that's what I mean, you know, it's just, I, 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 sometimes I don't even know what to say no more, bro, because if, if you look at Elijah Muhammad, if you look at Marcus Garvey, you look at, you know, the, the, those people that came before us, man, when, even the travels that Marcus Garvey went through, man, Mar Marcus Garvey went to place, places where black people were, you know, in this world that they didn't even have conventional roles, bro. Right. Just to spread the gospel of freedom to our people, man. Like, it's, it's, it's yeah, you know. I'm gonna say this, I'll say this because this is, this is a couple of the secrets, the tips that I've implemented onto myself. When I do start to think like, man, I'm dumb boy. I always think about Mr. Farrakhan, who's mm -hmm. almost 90 years old and still going harder than a lot of people in their 20s and as far as mission. So it takes away my thought. If I if I ever myself come up with an excuse, I'm like, I can't make an excuse because he was in his 60s, 70s, 80s, still mm -hmm. going hard. You know, but also it means so much to hear you continue to talk, continue to go after the youth, to continue to speak, even in the times where you feel like, man, they're not getting it because one or two of them are getting it. Yes, you're you know, right about that. 150, 200 that you may speak to and mm -hmm. they might it might seem like, but man, I've been blessed to speak at schools and things of that nature, man. And I've run into grown men who see me today and tell me, man, you came to my school when I was in middle school and you said it and they will repeat something I said and I don't even remember that I said. So mm -hmm. it makes you know that the work is impactful and the words are impactful, even if you just get uh, one or two or a handful of them. So mm -hmm. that's what I want you to take forward, but because you are so valuable, man. Um, and bef before I let, get you out of here, I got a couple more I got to ask you about. What, what, mm -hmm. what about, what role do you think um, economics plays for us co collectively as black people in terms of what do we have to do and learn to trust oh, each man. other on those levels? Because that's that's our that's one of our tools or weapons that we can yeah. use to um, to get treated a little better and to free ourselves. No, man, I, I think that's the that's the key to you know besides the spiritual aspect mm -hmm. of it. You know, you that's first and foremost. I I, I think. I think history, bro. One of the things that I marvel at, you know, with the nation, bro, is that before they did do anything, you know, they clean the body first. Yeah. You know, you clean the body the way that you eat. Um, then, they, then they clean the mind. Um, if 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 we would just go back, um, some they asked me at a at a um. They asked me at a business convention one time if I could give a blanket present to all black businesses. Um, what would I what I what would I give to them? And or what would I tell them that they should do? And I would say it's not fair, but they should teach a history lesson first. Okay, Reno, when I go all over the United States, one of the things that I do in my lectures is I make black people close their eyes and I ask them because I, I believe you can't, you can't, you can't lie to the God in yourself. 
Uh, so if you close if you close your eyes and somebody asks you a question and you answer, you're not gonna lie to yourself. Come on. You know? So then I'll tell them to open their eyes. Then I say about 86, 87% of the people, black people, when I ask them how they feel about black people, they say that they don't trust, they don't like, um, they're disappointed. So I go through my whole entire lecture and then I loop back at the end of the lecture. And I make the same people stand up and I say, can you repeat again how you feel about black people? And then they'll take they say it again. And I say, well, do if you don't trust, if you don't like, um, if you're disappointed, then do you think that would affect how you spend? And then it's like, yeah, would that affect the type of movies that you like? Or, you know, even like in music, music ain't dying because of the internet. Music is dying because black people don't love black people. You know, if you go to a Justin Bieber fan, you know, back in the day when we had CDs, if you, you know, when Justin Bieber first popped up, you know, tell a believer um, <laughs> that, that you got a burnt CD from Justin Bieber. They might fight you. Oh, yeah. Now, ask a fan who loved David Banner and grew up with David Banner. Man, I got that new David Banner. Man. How much? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> let me get, let me get two of them. <laughs> <laughs> I get David Banner back, you know on the t-shirt and stuff. But, but my point is, man, is that um, we have to love self. And I think once we love self, uh, it will cure every problem that we have. I tell, I tell people all the time, if, if we thought, if, if, if we taught our children that they were gods, maybe they would start acting like God. And if, if they started acting like gods, other people would honor them as such you know um we got to love ourselves i think if we if we saw god in each other and not niggas it would be impossible for us to kill each other we might whoop the devil out of them but it would be impossible to kill god we sort of did the same things to ourselves that white people did to us we we we, we dehumanize the black body so we don't see worth in the black body you know, and when I say the black body, I mean economics, I mean spirituality. I mean, the fact that most of us, bro, believe in the form of religion of not, you know, most, most people, and, I, I, and I'm willing to argue, well, let's just keep it in the United States because um, I've traveled all over. I used to think that, um, and I actually learned this when I was in uh, Tanzania, do you know, man, most people, they, they didn't, you know, they don't praise the God that they praise from research. They don't praise the God that they praise uh, uh, because they had a choice. They were usually given their religion. And, you know, it's funny, you know, when we talk about self-esteem, <clears throat> I heard a great man say once that, um, if God doesn't look like you, and Black people are more, uh, are more religious than any other groups of people on this planet, God don't look like you, how you think that's gonna make your child feel? If the thing that they praise to, the thing that means the most to them don't, you know, that's, I, I was raised by my stepfather, and my stepfather treated me better than he treated his own son, but still to look at a man that don't look like me, well, I don't look like him, I should say. That 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 doesn't fare well with 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 the with the black male self-esteem or black people in general or any human at all, if you don't see God in them. Mm. You know, so I, I just think, man, that the, the key to all of our problems is, is loving ourselves again. Like I, I gotta honestly tell you, Kay Reno, um, I real love love our people. Yeah. Even even in their most ratchet right. moment, bro. Right. I never forget when I found out that uh, the reason why we have haters in our communities is because doing slavery, when one slave would escape, they would beat every slave that was still, even the house Negroes, they would beat everybody nearly to death. Yeah. Not severely beat them, beat them nearly to death. So what happened is through that trauma, anytime we see somebody escaping the plantation thinking about it yeah we do we 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 actually connect that with death 
Come on. So if somebody, you know, selling drugs in, in, in the hood or doing anything negative that you can name, we'll line up for that. But if somebody doing something positive, you know, you know, you know, speaking well, looking well, you trying to be white. Oh, you think you better than no? What's wrong with me? We be speaking proper English and knowing stuff and being smart. You know what I'm saying? But once I found out that everything that you want to know is rooted and has a rationale and reason, and nothing happens by mistake. Right. You know, but so if you get the knowledge of if if, if you're able to break down on uh, um, the reason why we act, you'll even smile sometimes. Like. I realize, and I'm not joking about this. I'm serious. And by the way, y'all, the God Box Two is coming out real soon. Um, make sure that y'all go and subscribe to the David Banner podcast because I never talk about me most times <laughs> when, when, I, when we talk about our people. But what I was gonna say, anytime I start doing music, K Reno, is I see more hate than I've ever seen in my life. Bro. I don't know why it is. As long as I'm away from music, I guess it's anytime I'm away from things that the average people feel like they can do. We made rap, we watered rap down so much that the average person feels like their little brother can do better than you. Why should they buy music? But we allowed music to be watered down that way. I tell the kids all the time, if you're a rapper, but you're not trying to conquer the English language, like what person, like if 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 you playing basketball, you're gonna try to do something that's connected with basketball better than anybody else. You're gonna try to jump higher run faster, rebound better. You know what I'm saying? And in rap, I don't I don't see the want to be that anymore. Like you you should you should have the the verbal dexterity. Bro, when when people hear my new album, I remember man, I played my new album for Mad Lib. And Mad Lib looked like he had saw the the, the second coming, bro. And he was like, "Yo, Banner, I didn't know you was that." I'm like, "Bro, cuz I'm smarter." <laughs> I read, I practice. Right. He was like, bro, like I ain't, bro. I was like, yeah, I'm on their ass. Yeah. But it's because I practice. I work hard. I I, 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 I ain't gonna lie to you. And I don't mean it in a mean way. But when I play a beat or when I do a song, I realize, I realize try to turn producers and rappers back in the fans again. Right. You know, it, I, and I'll tell you something, man. Um, Somebody in Houston that makes me feel that way. Killer Calion. No. <laughs> oh. When when I when I hear when I hear that young man rap, that's how I used to want to make people feel when I rap, dog. And I don't understand, man. Like that 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 boy amazes me, bro. And 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 he he he's so underrated, man. He's so underrated that it's it's a shame, man. He. He's one of the best to come out this city, but in my eyes, he don't get the he don't get the props he should get. Bro. He man, that boy raps. When yeah. I tell you, he like he, yeah, like he it, it seems like he be feeling like that ain't gonna be no more microphones. <laughs> so I, I'm gonna make sure. Yeah. I think but I yeah. think he just he just got that dog in it because he have been an underdog. I think. See, the most beautiful thing, and, and I'm getting that from listening to you speak, the most beautiful thing with an artist is to hear an artist that has been in it so long, still mm -hmm. feeling like they got something to prove. Mm -hmm. Still feeling like every time I, I still got to show people that I'm mm -hmm. good. And if you never lose that quality, then you're going to always be good. I'll tell you what, I, what where I got that from. Every... Everybody needs to feel like they're the best, but when you believe it is when you fall off. Yeah. Every master has a master. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, I, I, I want to be better. I want to get smarter every day. I want to get better as an artist every day of my life. I, I am not content. I don't listen to my own smoke. Yeah. Like I, I don't, I don't, you know, when people tell me I have a, I have a mus I have a Muslim friend, um, who said in the, 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 the section of, of, of Islam that he believes in, that they are taught to turn away from comments mm -hmm. because he said that, that he believes that, that you are judged by the accolades that people give you. Mm -hmm. So he don't want it. Like if you tell him, man, you you this, you know, Banner, I don't, you know, I don't, yeah. I want to continue 
to to work as if I don't have it. Yeah. I want to continue to work like it never came. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like I always try to continue to be a student of, of the game, man. Um, you know, I, I I am a fan of music, and that's something that I'll never stop being. You know, is is a fan and being grateful for the opportunity. Right. Well, I thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to sit down and talk to you. Shout out to Miss Regina for, for plugging it all together. Nothing but love, yeah. brother. And continue success to you, brother, because you are valuable. We need you. We love mm -hmm. you. And anything you need from your big brother, do not hesitate. Can I say something in closing, bro? Yes, sir. Um, one of the reasons why in my interviews I try to open up a little bit more than most rappers do is because you said it, man. The reason why I told you that I was tired is because I am. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm talking about spiritually, mentally, physically, um, in every way. But when these kids see me, they're gonna see the same thing you said. Like, I thought he told me he was tired. Mm -hmm. And look at him. And what I want them to know is that it's okay for you to rest. It's okay for you to slow down as long as you don't stop. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Like, I go through it too. And maybe with people knowing that I go through it, you know, Snoop did that for me, man. When I was going through my depression, Snoop sat down, rolled seven blunts, and told me his life. I'm talking about post death row. People forget that when Snoop Dogg came out, he was on, he, and shortly after, he was on trial for murder. Right. Snoop Dogg was literally 90 seconds from going to jail for the rest of his life. They would sit back and they said, the verdict is, and I remember the whole, it, all the air was out of the room. You know, the, 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 the gang violence, the him and pop, he started from the moment that he signed with Master P all the way up to when he met me. And like at that time I had like a $700,000 tax problem. You know, Snoop had a $3 million tax problem. Mm. And Snoop just sat down and told me his life. And not that I marveled in his pain, but it just let me know that I'm 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 not the only one. These demons have a, a way of putting us in our own corners and making us suffer alone. And I want people to know that they're not the only ones that's tired. Just keep going. Beautiful words, man. The great David Banner, right here on K Reno Radio, man. We got fed so good, man. Thank you, brother. And thank you, success, bro. Continue success and Anytime, man. Thank you for the love, big brother. I'm proud of you, man. Proud of you too, fam. All right. Thank you, bro. Peace. Peace. <laughs>